Hello again, everybody. It's me, your old buddy Steve Simonson, and I'm coming back. Well, you probably you probably already figured this out with another podcast episode. I, the reason I figure you're onto it is because you probably had to click the button to play the episode. So maybe that intro is not so helpful. But either way, it's already happened, and this is ap- actually episode number 226. So you go to awesomers.com slash 226, and then you'll be able to see uh, the notes and the details about this show and various links that we may put in, including links to Catalyst 88, which this uh, podcast is part of the Catalyst 88 podcast network. And you'll see links to Parsimony, which the software for Awesomers is running on Parsimony. And you'll see links to Empowery, the nonprofit cooperative to help all e-commerce sellers. You'll see all those links. And, uh, and I want you to check them out, uh, spend a little time. Now, we're in the Axiom mini-series, and I've got 26 axioms. And these are things that I repeat so often that I had to marketize these into kind of like, oh, these are special. This is not Steve just walking around in circles repeating himself. Uh, so that's good marketing, everybody. Axiom 11 is simple, uh, but again, it's hard-hitting. Uh, in fact, I would like to get some of the the axioms with more words down to fewer words. And let me just tell you what axiom 11 is, and then I'll tell you what it's about. We do more with less. So this actually is related to the law of parsimony, right? We do more with less. This is part of a startup mentality, and it's part of uh, running an entrepreneurial organization. This means we don't have the same resources as a big company, right? So if we're selling a consumer brand, it's hard to compete against Procter & Gamble because they do more with more, but we do more with less. We have less resources. We have less you know, financial resources. We have less team resources. We have less uh, in uh, laboratory resource, investigation resources, right? We sell in uh, some categories in the home furnishing space and we're getting killed and we're getting clobbered by freight basically freight forwarding and containers and so forth are out of control here in 2021 i'm sure many of you can relate well we don't have the same resource that home depot does to go charter their own boat to carry their containers back and forth from asia we just don't have it it doesn't mean we don't want it right we will take it if somebody wants to allow us but we don't have enough containers to fill it up and we're not really in that logistics business so we do have just strictly empirically less stuff, less resources, less experience, perhaps less um, people, less technology, less, you know, blah, 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 blah. Right. So that means as an entrepreneur, you have to embrace kind of the law of parsimony, which means getting more done with less resources. And that's what we try to do. We want to exceed uh, with whatever resources we have. And I should say excel. We want to excel with the resources we have. So whatever limitations we have, and everybody's got their own little calculus and, and their resources, right? Some people are like, oh, you know, I've got 500 bucks and I want to start a business. Fine. Kudos. Everybody starts somewhere. And somebody else is like, I got a half million bucks. Uh, I, I, you know, I want to make a new launch. And guys like Thrasio are like, hey, I got a, you know, $2 billion. I'm buying up companies, right? Everybody's got something. But we start with the mentality in a startup that we have to yield more results with less inputs, with less people, with less finance, which means we have to be hardworking. We have to be more crafty about our spend. We can't be laissez-faire about just, you know, ah, we need this technology. We'll just buy the first one we see. If it's a considered investment, we need to be thoughtful about it. We need to spend uh, in alignment with our expectations for return on investment even understanding there's a return on investment. (laughs) It's kind of an entrepreneurial reality, right? When we spend money on Google, that has to make us money or Amazon or Facebook, whatever. But there are big companies that are like, oh, let's allocate 5% or 10% of our spend over those online things, right? Well, we've we've heard this online thing's big. Let's just allocate 10% or 15%, right? And they just, it's they're kind of just going down a checklist. But we're like, hey, our percent, Whatever we're spending, you know, whether it's 100% online or some other percent, it's got to all make money. Otherwise, we're out of business, right? That is doing more with less. We have to get ourselves and our staff typically to do more than a very narrow set of responsibilities might be in a a traditional kind of corporate setting, right? 
So in a corporate setting, you might have a, a controller and have a accounts receivable clerk and accounts payable clerk and a, you know, then you got a, that rolls up to an, a finance manager. And, you know, there may be some other finance associates with data entry responsibilities. And you're like, no, no, we got nothing. We got QuickBooks and, and, and a guy, right? Or a, an agency that helps us. But we got to get the job done. The result of financials has to be the same, whether we're a giant corporation with all those resources or a small entrepreneurial company. We need to know our numbers. We need to understand our performance. And ultimately, we have to report and pay our taxes. So we have to actually have the same net result. And that means we have to do more with less. Now, in fairness, those large organizations have a lot of complexities that we don't have, a lot of overhead of, um, let's call it, waste even that that we won't have and they have a lot of luxuries that we we don't we're not privy to but that's fine we're, we're, we don't care it's not about us against them in the the resource category it never can be because they'll always have more right the big companies will always have more it's just us recognizing they have more stuff we got less stuff but we have to get more from less we have to have that better roi and undeniably Amazon sellers in particular, but e-commerce entrepreneurs at large, have really exceptional return on capital. And you know, return on invested capital is a financial metric. You can go Google that and check it out. We're really good at it because we have to be, right? Our survival is at stake. This is not, uh, you know, uh, Baxter in accounting going, well, you know, uh, here's a $2 million, go see if you can make this idea work. And you come back a year later and go, well, $2 million is gone, the idea didn't work. And Baxter goes, oh, well, no problem. Here's another 2 million, go try this idea. And you're like, okay, Baxter, see you in a year, right? Maybe that one works, maybe it isn't. It's like, we got X amount of dollars, whether it's 5,000, 10,000, 1,000, or 200,000 for this product, this idea, this service, whatever it happens to be. And by gosh, Baxter in accounting is going, if you don't make money, we're out of business. Right, that's who Baxter in accounting is for you, and that most often, by the way, is you. Right, you kind of know you can do the math in your head: are we making money? Are we losing money? Uh, I don't really want you to do it in your head. I want you to learn. If you are, for example, a product seller on Amazon or Shopify or any e-commerce seller, I want you to know your true landed costs. You probably know the cost the supplier is charging you. You may even know the container price you're paying. But you may not know how all those layers of landing costs break down. I want you to know those. And so how can you do, how can you get that knowledge with less cost? Well, make a spreadsheet, do it yourself, right? Or use parsimony where we have landing cost vouchers and it tracks every single one of those. You put in a PO, it goes to the supplier. That's cost one. Landing cost then tracks in every single, the landing cost voucher tracks every single layer of cost. Here's customs, here's duties, here's Trump tariffs. Here's drayage. Here's you know port to port fees. Here's a the capacity surcharge, right? If you haven't got privy to those, <laughs> um, capacity surcharges in containers are blowing it up. But knowing that is how you manage it, right? Uh, we talked earlier about North Score and our game and another axiom. Well, this is how you track that score for, uh, for example, logistics uh, and freight. You track with the landed cost voucher. But you you can't go and, and typically buy NetSuite like the big aggregators, right? They're they're all investing hundreds of thousands of dollars in their systems. But you can have the same level of system with the parsimony, as an example. By the way, parsimony has a free version. So this is not me just selling you parsimony, although I would love you to send money to parsimony. Uh, there is a forever free version that you can use and, and check it out. It's big. It's comprehensive. So it's there's a learning curve to it but it is the same type of capabilities that those big aggregators are using. And uh, I'll be honest, most often the Amazon sellers that, that get into it, they're like, ah, oh, this is complex. I don't know how to use it. The interface is hard for me. Well, I give up. And it's like, yeah, cool, no problem. But you're missing the chance to compete with those, those big uh, consolidators. Uh, you know, although I'm not gonna get too far off track, but I do want you to know, the business of selling on Amazon, the business of e-commerce is changing as these, as these big aggregators are going to consolidate this business. And it will be harder and harder for independents to compete long term. Uh, so know that. So you, whether it's Procter & Gamble or these aggregators or just a well-financed competitor, you have to do more with less. I have to do more with less. And as you have these ideas and you're like, all right, I've got this stack of money 
and I want this stack of results, you have to kind of make that ROI sing. So Axiom 11 is mission critical. Uh, certainly in my case, I embrace this as an entrepreneur as a way of you know reminding ourselves we have to have value for every dollar we spend. We cannot look at um, investments that we make in a, again, kind of a passive way and go, well, I hope it works out, right? We have to be very judicious. That means everybody in your organization culturally should learn this axiom. Doing more with less is a good thing. And it indeed is a very positive thing. So axiom 11, we do more with less. That's one for the record books for sure. Uh, it saves us a lot of time and energy uh, when you think about culture and, and onboarding people to, to really drive this point home. So uh, go ahead over to awesomers.com slash 226 and uh, check out the show notes details. Uh, don't forget to check out uh, catalyst88.com, parsimony.com, empowery.com, and other sites that are part of the Catalyst 88 podcast network because we want you to uh, have access to all these great tools and resources that are available for e-commerce entrepreneurs and indeed entrepreneurs who are still entrepreneurs, right? You're just wanting to get involved. Uh, that's it for me, everybody. We're going to tie this one off. Part of the Axiom mini series, all done, Axiom 11, all done and done. See you next time, everybody.